In spite of political uncertainties, the period between the 12th and 18th centuries was a phase of unprecedented prosperity and growth in trade and crafts. Besides, the growth of towns in various parts of the country was another notable feature of the period. These developments were the outcome of the political and economic policies followed by rulers in Delhi and regional centers. These towns grew into trading and industrial centers, which in turn led to general prosperity. During the long rule of the Mughals, urbanization in India received a further impetus. The political and economic policies followed by the Turkish and Mughal rulers, along with the demand for Indian goods abroad, such as textiles, led to an enormous expansion of textile manufacturing. Rulers like Akbar, Jahangir and Shah Jahan supported trading activities and removed obstacles to the movement of goods and people. Burgeoning foreign trade led to the development of markets, hassle-free trade and commerce and the growth of city population. The production of handicrafts increased in order to keep up with their demand abroad. Moroccan traveller Ibn Battuta, who visited India during the Sultanate period, describes the flourishing markets of the big cities in the Gangetic Plains, Malwa, Gujarat and southern India. The establishment of a sound currency system during the Sultanate period thus provided a fillip to the urban economy. Other foreign travellers like Niccolo di Conti, Athanasius Nicotin, Abdul Razak, Domingo Pais and Gracia Daorta have also left vivid descriptions of urban development during the period. Types of towns Quite a few towns developed as trading towns while others were founded by rulers and administrators and some came into existence due to geographical factors such as location and climate while still others had important religious buildings. Towns could be categorized into temple towns, commercial towns, port towns or administrative centers. Most towns combined several functions, that is, they were administrative centers, temple towns as well as centers of commercial activities and craft production. Administrative centers Due to their strategic location, a number of capital towns developed throughout the Indian subcontinent. They were also referred to as capital towns or cities or co-towns. Capital towns were the main seat for the administrative machinery. These towns were surrounded by well-defended forts comprising open areas for military practice, sarais and cultural hubs. Existence of capital cities to a large extent depended on royal patronage, Delhi, Agra, Kannauj, Tanjore, Vijayanagara, Hampi and Devagiri were among the prominent capital towns of the period. Temple Towns and Pilgrimage Centers Religion has been an integral part of human life since the beginning. The medieval period saw the emergence of a number of temple towns and pilgrimage centers such as Tirupati, Somnath, Madurai, Ajmer, Benares, Mathura and Nashik. Temple towns were centered around large temples, that is, activities of the temples shaped the economy and society of the town. A variety of people congregated around temples to participate in trade, agriculture, banking and craft production, which were organized and promoted by the temples. Thus, pilgrimage centers received regular patronage from devotees, pilgrims and rulers all of whom contributed to their rapid growth. Centers of Trade and Commerce The growth of trade and commerce proved to be a major driving force for the emergence of urban centers. Trade relations existed within India as well as with the external world. Indian merchants exchanged surplus goods such as spices, tea, silk, textiles, semi-precious stones and other merchandise that were in great demand in other countries and within various regions of India. Market streets called Hat 
or large retail markets called mandis existed in towns and large villages certain towns like banaras kanchipuram and pulikat became important textile and craft centers settlements of merchants and traders in a particular region and the connectivity of a town with neighboring areas and towns also contributed to the process of urbanization at times merchants and traders traveled from one town to another to buy local articles and sell products from distant places traders traveled long distances with their goods in big groups called caravans therefore the places where they halted to rest and recoup were called caravan sarais merchants traded with southeast asia europe africa and arabia as a result of the discovery of trade routes a number of trading settlements such as surat masulipatnam patna dhaka agra and lahore became important these were located at the intersections of important trade routes port towns long coastline of the country and its extensive trade with the outside world encouraged the rise of many port towns kambay sapara bharuj surat and goa were located on the western coast while tamralipti and masulipatnam were important ports on the eastern coast these ports facilitated india's trade with africa west asia europe and southeast asia founded towns occasionally new capital cities were founded if the existing ones became overcrowded in the 16th century sultan muhammad kuli qutb shah founded the city of hyderabad as golconda had become too congested akbar founded fatehpur sikri to mark his victory after conquering of gujarat as an expression of mughal authority and sovereignty the city of shah jahanabad was founded it comprised the jama masjid red fort wide roads bazaars as well as administrative centers of the mughal dynasty a closer look at three cities hampi a grand capital city hampi is located on the banks of the river tungabhadra in northern karnataka the name hampi is an anglicized version of the kannada word hamp derived from pampa the ancient name of river tungabhadra hampi stands among the ruins of vijayanagara the former capital of the vijayanagara empire in northern karnataka it is also referred to as virupakshapura after the name of the patron deity of the vijayanagara rulers virupaksha the empire was founded by the telugu princes harihara and bakka in 1336 ce it reached the height of its glory under krishna deva raya hampi was chosen as the capital due to its strategic location bound by the river tungabhadra on one side and the defensive hills on the other side foreign travelers like nicolo conti from italy abdul razak from persia and domingo pace from portugal visited vijayanagara and described the city as well fortified with a distinctive architecture the buildings had splendid arches domes and pillared halls well planned orchards and pleasure gardens with sculptural motifs such as the lotus were also built the account of domingo pais who visited the court of krishna deva raya is particularly unique as it provides a vivid account of the vijayanagara empire besides beautiful palaces there were many temples in the city including the vithala swami and virupaksha temples The temples were the hub of cultural activities and devadasis that is temple dancers performed before the deity the royalty and the masses remains of rows of shops on either side of the road leading to the virupaksha temple suggest that the temple was a center of commerce as well according to abdul razak a huge tank was built with the help of portuguese masons channels were constructed to supply water from the tank to different parts of the city vijayanagara enjoyed voluminous maritime trade with several countries and regions such as persia arabia africa 
the Malayan archipelago, Burma, China and numerous islands in the Indian Ocean region. Hampi controlled the internal trade on the Indian peninsula except for a few principalities along the Malabar coast. The empire was well known as an important centre of textile industry, mining, metalwork and agricultural products. The main articles of export were gold, spices such as cardamom and pepper, and precious stones, jewels, spices, cotton, ivory, semi-precious stones and perfumes were the main items of trade with China. The articles of import were saffron, coral, knives, rose water, quicksilver and vermilion. Masuli Patnam Masuli Patnam or Machli Patnam is a city on the Koromandal coast of Andhra Pradesh in India. The city derives its name from a gateway to the town decorated with the eyes of a fish, Machli. It was founded in the 14th century by Arab traders who found their way from the Red Sea to southern India. The town became a centre of international trade and commerce for the Dutch, the English and the French. The Dutch had established a factory at Masuli Patnam after receiving a farman from the Qutub Shahi rulers. The English East India Company had set up its first trading post here in 1611 CE. However, during the Carnatic Wars, they lost the port city temporarily to the French. The British conquered it again, along with the northern Sarkars in 1759 CE. In the beginning, Masulipatnam traded with countries like Indonesia, Thailand and Malaysia. The establishment of a sea link with the Arab countries led to the expansion of trade which proved advantageous for the port town. Masulipatnam evolved as a centre where weaving and dyeing industries flourished. The articles of trade comprised chins, muslin and diamonds. The port centre was famous for its kalamkari textiles and prints, which were created by painting designs in coloured dyes onto the cloth using a bamboo kalam pen. Kalamkari cloth had a ready market in West Asia and Europe. Under the Mughals, Masuli Patnam handled a lot of trade among different regions of India. Example, tobacco and dyed cotton textiles were transported from Masuli Patnam to Bengal and large amounts of indigo were transported from Bengal to Masuli Patnam. Surat Surat, now one of the biggest cities of western India, is located on the banks of the river Tapti in present-day Gujarat. During the medieval period, it grew to acquire the status of a major port city and trading centre. It was also seen as a gateway to the West as traders used this port to conduct trade with West Asia. It had a fertile hinterland which provided food and other resources as well as a wealthy banking community. In 1514 CE, the Portuguese traveller Duarte Barbosa described it as an important seaport. During the Mughal rule, Surat became the main commercial city of India. The town was a major centre for export of textiles, indigo and other articles. Goods and merchandise were transported from Surat to various parts of the Mughal Empire. Raw cotton grown in the region around Surat were transported to Bengal. Fine cotton textile produced in Bengal was transported to Surat to be shipped out to West Asia, East Africa and Malabar. The main commodities exported from Surat were zari work, jewellery, silk fabrics, etc. In Surat, there were some important places like the custom house where traders paid taxes. The imperial mint where traders from foreign countries gave their gold and silver in exchange for coins of the Mughal Empire. By the end of the 16th century, Surat was under Portuguese control. Later, the English East India Company made it a trade transit point. In 1612, the British destroyed Portuguese naval supremacy and obtained an imperial farman from Jahangir to establish a British trading post and factory at Surat. However, Surat began to decline towards the end of the 17th century when the Maratha leader Shivaji ransacked it in 1664 CE. 
the Mughals lost control over its market and productivity. Sensing the weakness of the Mughal power, the English shifted their headquarters to Cambay. Surat was finally taken over by the British in 1759. Crafts and Technology The different types of crafts practiced in the Indian subcontinent are well known for their aesthetic, functional and monetary values. The artists, weavers, painters, masons, stone cutters, carpenters, perfume makers, etc. played a pivotal role in popularizing Indian crafts in India and all across the world. They conceptualized beautiful and innovative designs and patterns and translated them onto cloth, paper or any other base, jewelry, carpets, furniture, Perfumes, home furnishings, sculptures and handmade crafts were greatly in demand. The members of the royal family wore clothes of silk, muslin, brocade along with pearl and gold jewellery and used musk as well. The luxurious lifestyle of the upper classes and nobles in society led to an increased demand for craft products. Cotton was the most important among all the fabrics used in this period. Akbar encouraged the production of silk and Bengal became a thriving center for the production of cotton and raw silk. Internal and external trade Accounts of foreign travelers shed ample light on the self-sufficiency of the villages, towns and cities. The major articles of internal trade were wheat, rice, sugar, textiles and spices. Sea and land routes were used to conduct trade. Superior quality rice and sugar from Kannauj, wheat from Punjab, sugarcane and textiles from Bengal found their way to the markets of Delhi. Trade relations with Africa, Europe, Indonesia, China, Persia and Burma existed during this period. Articles like rice, spices and sugarcane were exported to Southeast Asian countries while horses, luxury products and metals were imported from Persia. Indian textiles were also in great demand abroad. Due to the process of urbanization and economic growth, India's foreign trade with the European and Asian markets increased considerably.